Greetings, immortal beings, and welcome to the channel. I'm Primal Chaos, and um, okay, today I'm kind of really excited because we're, go we're about to jump back into uh, Unleash the Archers. Now, uh, this song is one that's been highly requested, and just briefly, I've, I've mentioned in the past, obviously many times, I prefer doing videos that have um, music videos attached, uh, but this is primarily so that I can understand who I'm listening to, like who the band is, what their visual aesthetic is like, how many members there are things like that just makes it a little bit easier to connect with the music in, in some ways when it's the first time listening. Um, but this song doesn't have a music video, uh, but it, somebody mentioned in the comments that the band members themselves or one of the band members says that if you want to really listen to our work, this is the song to do it with um, because it's probably the one he's most proud of. And um, who am I to deny that? <laughs> Let's do it. This is, um, I'm super keen to get into this one. Everything I've heard from Unleash the Archers is fantastic. Um, and so, you know, this hopefully will be mind blowing. Um, it's from their 2020 album Abyss, and this is The Wind That Shapes the Land. Let's take a look. Already, I can see why this this would be a favorite amongst the band members because it has the feel of an opus, right? This is like they've thrown everything they can at this one, um, and yet in typical, in my perspective, unleash the archers style, they're throwing the kitchen sink at this thing, and it's still not overdone. You know, everything just fits nicely in its place. I love the intro has that sort of like it's four four, but it's got like like that triplet sort of accent, it's da -da 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 kind of thing. Um, and, you know, I was noticing some cool little, really subtle sounds underneath the vocals in the intro as well, just those oohs and ahs, um, that sounded like there was some other choral stuff behind there, but mixed so far back, you can't even really hear it. Um, really cool. But yeah, let's go back a bit, because I just want to catch some of those changes again. They, they were just really nice. What I started long ago. Oh, actually, one other thing I wanted to mention too. Um, the lyrics are fantastic. They really tell a story, but in a very poetic way. It's not It's not sort of on the nose. Um, and I mean, I know that this is part of a larger concept album sort of thing. And to be fair, I'm not 100% familiar with the story. Um, the main reason is I would love to dive in and listen to both of these albums, but I've got to make sure I don't spoil any reactions for the future. And I want to react to a lot more of these guys. So sadly, that's kind of the, the weird sort of situation between a rock and a hard place. Um, I'd really love to get into this and experience the stories as a, as a whole, the two stories. Um, and I will eventually, don't panic, but it's just un until I get sort of some of these reactions out of the way, I know it's partially missing the point, but I've got to, you know, sort of power through it for now anyway. Um, but I just love, you know, uh, it's, 
it's still it's it's kind of matter of fact lyrically but it's it's still poetic and i i think that's fantastic work um let's go back a little bit more beautiful production too really nice little what I started long ago. and though That's it, my chance, so that's cool. Just one thing I want to point out, I know I'm jumping around a lot, but one thing I want to point out there, sometimes when people are doing these weird, almost polyrhythm accents, um, you know, they're playing like a straight diggity good, diggity good, did it, did it, but they'll have like a beat accented that changes on each bar, which sounds fantastic when the whole band lands on it, you know, and it gives you that sort of percussive sort of sort of edginess right um if you just listen to the accents on their own it seems like they've placed them in such a way that it almost sounds like a tribal drum beat you know what i mean like it's uh um you know it's it sounds like a rhythm in itself just the accented beats against each other as opposed to in amongst all of the other parts of the rhythm um and it's kind of in a way it's a little bit musical i kind of I, that, the first time i listened through i noticed that Sounds like big taiko drums or something. that part there's like a little do 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 going on in there that almost sounds like a synth but no it's guitar it just has a really rounded tone through there it's not not all that edgy which is nice because it doesn't stand out it sort of sits back as a textural device in the overall sound right
come on. Could, hang on, could it be she's reached the pinnacle now? The phrasing of that line was really interesting. I was trying to figure out where we were up to in the lyrics. Um, and uh, yeah, just it's it, she's chosen to do something that's more of a melodic cadence than to make sense, you know, as a sentence, you know, and it's interesting. Yeah, there it is. Hang on. Yeah, very cool. Whew. That's a F sharp, high F sharp. That's a big note. Petrucci again I mentioned it uh, in the last one it, it's just something about his choices like the harmonically how he plays against the you know the rhythm track it just there's like a it's like this positive soaring kind of sensation you get like you know through the way that he does bends and stuff like that there's definitely some Petrucci influence there and like I said last time, that's not a bad thing. That's awesome. It's definitely his own flavor. He's not like a Petrucci clone. He They just use similar elements um, in their melody, in their melodic composition of their solos, um, mode-wise or whatever. It's just, um, it just stands out to me really clearly. But again, not to diminish anything. It's it's more like, it's, 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 it's not like he's, you know, heavily influenced it's it's more like they're just two guitarists who make similar choices to me that's that's what it sounds like but man that's so good Oh 
Look at him. Stick around after the ad break and I'll do a full summary. This video is made possible by Enchroma. One in six guys and one in 200 women are colorblind. And if that happens to be you, there's something you can do about it. Click the link in the description. It'll take you to Enchroma's website where you can get a free eye test. And while you're there, maybe pick up some corrective lenses. They've got styles to suit everybody and a 60 day money back guarantee. So you've got really nothing to lose. And while you're there, use the code chaos in checkout to get 10% off. Tell them Primal Chaos sent you. What an amazing journey this song was and one thing i wanted to touch on i was trying to think of things to talk about during the thing but there was there was so much going on it's hard to remember everything i sort of picked up on but look the one thing that's that i take away from this song is that these guys are just doing their best to uphold the sacred rule of the great album Right. And I, and I haven't even heard the album in context, but I can hear based on this song, this is definitely an album track, right? Um, possibly like this is the kind of thing you would put at the end of the album as that big magnum opus that ties the whole piece together. I honestly don't know where this sits in the context, but that to, to me, it just reminds me of songs like that from other things. But the, the art of producing an album is a dying art and eventually it's just not going to be a thing anymore. And these sort of these sort of bands are like the last bastions of like, let's write the way that they the great rock bands and the great metal bands of like the seventies and eighties would do, where they would compile an album that was in itself a living, breathing entity that they would release singles from to try and draw attention to the magnum opus of this album, right? And so album tracks aren't a thing anymore but everybody's trying to consistently write the next hit um in these little bite-sized chunks you know and i don't know that that applies strictly to the metal industry as much um but you know i, I mean these guys are definitely metal but they they definitely have more of like a classic metal which i sort of liken more to classic rock sort of th uh, uh the feel to them right like this song clearly had a lot in common with stuff like big pieces from Iron Maiden and stuff like that. The gallopy rhythms and stuff. Sure, all that sort of stuff. What I'm talking about more is the journey that the song takes you on, you know? Um, if you listen to some of the bigger hits from Iron Maiden, it's never just a single theme throughout. It jumps around, it changes, and it takes you on an emotional ride from beginning to end. And, and it's the song is greater than the sum of its parts, and the parts are awesome, you know? <laughs> so... It's, this is the kind of aesthetic, uh, the kind of vibe that these guys are sort of dragging, kicking and screaming into 2022. And, you know, I mean, right down to, I'm looking at the, I couldn't stop looking at the painting of the cover art from the album the whole time because it just screams classic fantasy metal, sort of that, that weird tie-in that was happening through the 70s where everybody read Tolkien, you know, and then Dungeons and Dragons were a thing. And you got to remember also most metal bands from that era they were all nerdy guys. They were all dudes who played Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. And that inspired them to write stories and tell stories through music. Um, you know, going all the way back to like the, you know, the, the late sixties, you know, all there's bands were talking about fantasy stuff and, 
you know, obviously through the 60s and early 70s, it got sort of a little bit more intense. But, uh, you know, like, sorry, just you know, a partial yawn there. <laughs> like, okay, so, you know, when I think about things like this, I think about albums like Welcome to My Nightmare, you know, by Alice Cooper, um, where, you know, the story or the, you know, the album as itself takes a little bit, um, the, the, it always has top tier musicians. Alice Cooper's band always had the best musicians on the planet, but that wasn't the reason for admission. The reason for admission was the album and the artistry and the ego took a back seat. And that's exactly what's happening here. Um, now, as far as musically, I mean, these guys, their right hands are just simply amazing. <laughs> the guitar players, like the, the gallopy rhythms and stuff. And, you know, contrary to what people might think, there's a, there's a lot of really complex guitar styles, particularly recently with new modern techniques popping up and things like that. But anybody who's ever tried to learn how to pick a gallopy rhythm knows that it's not easy. It's far easier to play a consistent um, rhythm faster. Oh, wrong guitar. Hey. <laughs> Introduce you to my seven string. But okay, so, you know, like, for me personally, anyway, I mean, everybody's different. Everybody's hands are different. But playing a consistent rhythm is a lot easier than trying to um, pick a rhythm that's, um, you know, got a got a rhythm within itself. Um, see, I'm, I'm, I'm actually terrible at it. I've got to, part of what I've got to do, get, I always talk about getting back into practicing, but my right hand is absolutely atrocious currently because I haven't practiced in years, but, but to be able to, to consistently get those sort of gallopy rhythms, it's a lot harder than it looks, you know? And these guys are the masters of it. And I guarantee that's just from years and years of, you know, playing guitar and learning songs from like bands like Iron Maiden and things like that. Um, vocally, there's some great stuff in there. And let's not also forget, like, uh, as far as I'm aware, Britney's a mezzo, right? Uh, let's have a look. Just, just. So, you know... A mezzo can typically go from a G3 to an A5, and she was doing pretty close to the top of a range there with that high F sharp. Um, you know, so she probably has, I would say, a, a couple more notes above that, and also probably has um, a ra an extended range beyond that as well. I'm, I think I might have even heard that in other songs, but um, but that's that is that's still a difficult high note for a mezzo. Like, trust me. Um, and what, another thing I noticed in this song too is because she sort of ha typically has a deeper voice, um, this one sort of sits probably closer to the higher end of her, her um, comfortable sort of typical melodic range, right? Um, and there was, there was a really nice bite to it. There was a sharpness to it. Um, I think this is a really nice sort of range for her to sit in. Um, for this kind of music because it's it's at that point in her voice where it cuts through if she gets much lower it might sound a little bit more rounded um so she's g3 she can get down to uh probably yeah whatever it is but um you know this this was perfectly placed for her voice in my opinion you know and i'm sure she feels pretty comfortable singing this as well um what a what a great what a great song i'm assuming from a really good album <laughs> And I will find out, trust me. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Like, what should I do next from these guys? I really want to um, explore, you know, more diverse songs from them. And uh, yeah, just so keep me filled in. Um, that's about it, guys. As I've said in the past, if you feel comfortable, feel free to buy me a, a coffee. I'll put a link in the description. All these videos get demonetized. So it helps. Every little bit helps, guys. Um, like, share, subscribe. That helps even more. And, you know, of course, send me comments, recommendations, anything like that. Again, doesn't have to have a music video, but I prefer it if it does the first time I'm experiencing that band. Okay, so, um, yeah, keep it together, guys. I love you guys for the comments and recommendations, and I'll catch you on the next one.